Thank you for cruising by for my daily devotions, August the 11th. It's Sunday, August the 11th, 2024. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 7, Luke chapter 21, Psalm 18, and Second Chronicles chapter 22. Um, you know, I love the Proverbs, and in fact, I'm, I'm playing around with a sermon series in the future on Proverbs. I really want to get into it and come up with some of the major themes, maybe do about 10 sermons on it. <clears throat> and uh, just because it's so life applicable, it'll change change your life if we pay attention to it. Um, and understanding is a big, big part of that. I was just thinking about the 21st chapter of uh, Proverbs. And in verse 16, it says this, a man who strays from the path of understanding comes to rest in the company of the dead. You know, not a lot of people pay much attention to understanding things. And if we understand things, especially the things of God, and they come from the Bible, you know, to stray from understanding. I re I've i been reading the Bible for over 52 years. I plan to continue every day, just like I'm doing here, and studying and other things. But we need to live in a path of understanding the things of God, and we'll be blessed for that. That's, that's it desperately important. Let's take a minute and pray. Pray for Lindsay Christian Church. I just in the last couple of months, couple of months become their, their minister. And uh, ask God to use me to build that thing up, okay? To, to work through me, to impact people's lives for the kingdom and build up the Lindsay Christian Church. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'd speak to us today. Change our lives by what we hear from you. I pray that you'd use me at Lindsay and uh, that we'd reach people for Christ, make progress. Uh, so uh, cause that to happen, Father. I pray that you that you would lead. Help me get behind you and follow you and invite others to follow me as I follow Christ. Help us all to live that way, Father. I pray that you'd speak to us and change our lives by what we hear from you in the Bible today as we look at, at your scriptures. Change us, Father. Crawl inside us and write new stuff on our hearts. Make us different because we heard from you. Apply it to us with the power of the Holy Spirit and change us, Lord. I, make, I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation chapter 7. Going through the book of Revelation again. Aha. Uh -huh. Happens. Keeps on happening. Revelation chapter 7. 22 chapters in Revelation well, you know, we'll be done with them and back to Romans Revelation chapter 7 after this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on a tree then I saw another angel coming up from the east having the seal of the living God he called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our, of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were, were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? He answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. 
They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God to serve him day and night in his temple. He who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Luke chapter 21. As they looked up, Jesus saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. And I tell you the truth, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All of these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put, all she, put in all she had to live on. Gave it all up. That's sacrificial giving right there. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Happened in AD 70 when the Roman general Titus destroyed Jerusalem, killed a million Jewish people during that time. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen and what will be the sign that they are about to take place. He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. Many will come in my name claiming I am he and the time is near, but do not follow them. When you hear wars and revolutions, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. They will deliver you to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors and, and all on account of my name. This will result in being witnesses to them. But make up your mind not to worry, not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or con contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. All men will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. By standing firm, you will gain life. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that, it is, that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the city cry out. Let those in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. That's talking about the day of the Lord coming right there. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. That means Jesus coming back and establishing the kingdom at the day of the Lord. And it will never change after that. No, nothing ever changes. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. Good reason to read the Bible and ta get tangled up in his words. Never passes away. Stands forever. You're dealing with something eternal when you read the Bible why I read it every day. Be careful 
or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen to you, that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple, and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Psalm 18, another of the great Psalms. Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me, and snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. Uh, the earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering and a canopy around him the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemies, great bolts of lightning, and routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemies, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me up out of the spacious place and rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has rewarded me. I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have done... I have not done evil by turning as, by turning from my God. <clears throat> All his ways are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but bring those whose eyes are haughty. But bring low those whose eyes are haughty. You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his ways are perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is God beside the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who, who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. He arms his, And my arms bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory, and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath me, so that my ankles do not turn. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for battle. You made my adversaries bow at my feet. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, and there was no one to save them, to the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them like the, like, as fine as dust borne in the wind. I poured them out like mud in the streets. You have, delighted, you have delivered me from the attacks of the people. You have made me the head of nations, people I did not know are subject to me. 
As soon as they hear me, they obey me. Foreigners cringe before me. They are all they all lose heart. They come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God, my Savior. He is the God who avenges me and subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me, me above my foes. From violent men you rescued me. Therefore I will praise you among the nations, O Lord. I will sing praises to your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Second Chronicles chapter 22. Second Chronicles chapter 22. The people of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, Jehoram's youngest son, king in his place since the raiders who came with the Arabs into the camp had killed all the older sons. So Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to, began to reign. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. His mother's name was Athaliah, a granddaughter of Omri. He too walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother encouraged him in doing wrong. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as the house of Ahab had done. For after his father's death, they became his advisors to his undoing. He also followed their counsel when he went to Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael, king of Aram, at Ramoth-Gilead. The Arameans wounded Joram, so he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds that they had inflicted on him at Ramoth in the battle with Hazael, king of Aram. Then Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to Jezreel to see Joram, son of Ahab, because he had been wounded. Though Ahaziah's visit through Ahaziah's visit to Joram, God brought about Ahaziah's, Ahaziah's downfall. When Ahaziah arrived, he went out with Joram, to meet Jehu, son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to destroy the house of Ahab. While Jehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab, he found the princes of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's relatives had been attending Ahaziah, and, had, and he killed him. He then, sent for, uh, he then sent in search for Ahaziah, and his men captured him while he was hiding in Samaria. He was brought to Jehu, put to death, and they buried him. For they said he was a son of Jehoshaphat who sought the Lord with all his heart. So there was no one in the house of Ahaziah powerful enough to retain the kingdom. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she proceeded to destroy the whole royal family of the house of Judah. But Je Jehosheba, a daughter of King jo Jehoram, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the royal princes who were about to be murdered, and put him in his in, and his nurse in a bedroom, because Jeho Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram and wife of the priest Jehoiada, was Ahaziah's sister. She hid the child from Athaliah, so she could not kill him. He remained hidden with them at the temple of God for six years, while Athaliah ruled the land. They weren't very nice always, were they? They were horrible, actually. Well, God is good. He's spoken, and we praise him for that. Um, Father, bless this day. Use it to your glory and honor. Continue to speak to us through it, Father, and make a difference in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.